Greetings to subscribers and followers the worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and today I'm going to show you that special knot that I mentioned in Ask Dave uh, number 215. This is Ask Dave number 216. The problem that I had was I didn't want to leave a coax cable hanging by the connector, okay? Uh, these are crimp connectors, and my experience has been that uh, if you pull hard this way, it's very easy to uh, mess up the uh, connection to the shield here. So um, let me show you an example. Uh, this first example is of the dipole, um, and I've got a little bit of strain relief put in so that the uh, coax weight does not pull down on the connector nor on the antenna itself. Uh, here's another example of my beam where the um, coax, which is LMR 400, goes up to the uh, antenna, it's taped there, and then where it's hanging in midair is where I just sort of connect on the uh, cable for the uh, matching section. Actually, there's no strain on the cable here at all. Now here's a bad example, and it's a current one, I'm afraid. Uh, this is the octopus antenna, again a piece of LMR 400, and it is just hanging. And of course this thing gets whipped around in the wind and uh, needs some sort of strain relief up there. Uh, and so I'm going to show you one way of doing that. Uh, one way of doing that is to use a knot for some cord. You put the knot around this and you bring the cord up here above uh, the antenna and you pull on this enough that it reduces the strain on here. You can bow it a little bit to see that it, it's strain relieved or whatever. Now the trick is in the knot. This is a knot that I actually saw in QST and unfortunately it was long enough ago that I don't, <laughs> I can't find it. So um, I'm sure some of you will uh, make a comment and tell me the name of this knot and anything that I'm leaving out. So we're, we're going to, to take some extra uh, rope here. This piece will be the piece that we hang it by, okay? So what we're going to do is just take a little, not even a loop, just a sort of a little section of it uh, and lay it down on the coax right here, okay? Now, what we're going to do is take one end of that. This, this end over here is the one that's going to go up to the, uh, wherever the strain relief is from, okay, this end here. So this end, what we're going to do is pull it over and come in next to it there, okay, and we're going to just pull this tight as we go, and ideally they should be right next to each other, okay, and use your fingers to keep the thing from slipping on you, and we're going to wrap this around and around. Now each one of these wraps puts a little bit of grip on the coax cable. Any one of them by itself is not enough to hold the antenna up. But we're going to just keep wrapping up until we... Now you've got this loop hanging out here. That's what we're wrapping around. Okay, wrapping that close to each other. And, and we're trying hard to make this kind of tight as we can. Now this cord that I'm using is UV-resistant guy rope from QS Radio. I'll have to show you a uh, link for that. Um, and you can get this cord. Um, I bought a 500 foot roll of it. It's since been cut up into many, many lengths and so I have to uh, splice them together in order to create guy ropes for new antennas. But it does seem to be genuinely uh, sun resistant. Okay, now we're running out of loop before we're running out of rope. Um, so here's our loop right here, okay. 
and I'm going to do just one more. And then you stick the end through the loop. Okay, stick the end through the loop like that. That's it, just like that. That's all you've got to do. Just stick it like that. Now, come down here. This is attached to that loop and pull. And what that does is it will make that tight there. Now, holding it up here at the front, pull tight. Okay. Now, I bunched that up a little bit. Okay. Here's your cable you're going to, or the rope you're going to use to, to tie it tight to something. And let's see what happens. See if we can, I'll hold on this and I'll hold on that. And it does slip a little bit, doesn't it? Slips a little tiny bit. If it does slip too much for you, that's a pretty heavy pull, by the way. Uh, in most cases, it would hold it tight. And as you get dirt and stuff down in there, it'll hold it even tighter. Okay, but this is one way to get the strain relief off. Now, if we need to, yeah, it does feel loose, doesn't it? Now, if you want to take the thing apart, you've got to get this out of here. So I use uh, needle nose pliers to pull that last little piece out. No, <laughs> it's in there pretty tight. Once I pull this out, the knot will just fall apart. There we go. Now this just comes apart. See, you can take it off and do whatever you want. You might. Now, what you might do in a situation where this, where we did have a little bit of slip, is to make the loop longer, you know, like that. Because each grip around holds it a little bit. Now, let's try this with a smaller uh, diameter coax. That was LMR 400. Um, the other one. This is RG8X, which is much, much more flexible than the other. Okay, so let's take this end here. Take this end right here. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. This, again, is a crimp connector, and you can see where it's already... Um, the braid is showing right there. It's been pulled on. I'm not sure this is a good coax. I'd have to test it. Um, by the way, a good easy method of testing um, coax is to connect the coax to a dummy load. Connect it to a dummy load, connect up the SWR meter, and while you're wiggling the connectors and things like that, uh, the SWR should be one to one. You're connected to a dummy load for any length of coax um, and for any length of 50 ohm coax, okay? And if there's something wrong with the coax, it's, it's shorted or it's open or it's got a, a flaky connection, it'll show up when you do that test. Okay, so here we are. We, again, take our, our loop. It's just a, a piece of wire. We're not making a knot or anything right now. And we're going to hold that next to this. And we're going to take this and come around and then see we're going to come around and then bring it back on itself there. Okay. And then we're going to wrap it. Around this way. Well, we don't have much on there. I'm going to pull that out further. Okay. So, we're just 
wrapping this thing around. If you find you don't leave enough uh, rope to leave uh, a big enough knot or a long enough knot, just undo it, give yourself a little bit more and try again. It only takes a moment anyway to put this thing together. Um, again, the purpose of this is for strain relief on the coax so you're not pulling on the connectors. And I had a double reason on the uh, dipole I put together is because the connectors on the antenna itself, I didn't want to put any strain on that SO239 connector. Okay, we're getting down here toward the end. How much have we got so far? That much. Okay. And we keep going and going and going. Now let's go ahead and put that through there and reach down here and pull on that end until it's tight. Okay, now we want to pull from here, this spot right here, pull this this way. It will shorten up the rope. Okay, there we are. All right, and this is on the and this is what we would use for strain relief. Let's see how strong it is. No, that one isn't budging. Okay, so this would be a good strain relief and you could, uh, you know, like connect it into um, an antenna, the connector on the antenna, whatever, and then you can hang your coax without fear of pulling the connectors off. All right, you know, and that's really all there is to it. Um, now, if someone would, please tell me the name of the knot. I'd appreciate it. And um, also be sure to check out the support page, dcastler.com slash support, all different kinds of ways you can support. Please be sure to click like and all of that sort of thing. And I will see you next time in the Saturday live stream. So until we next meet, 73.